Kill them. <gasps> I need a help. I don't need any help. Really? <gasps> this started with having a chance to read the script and get a sense of all of it. You know from the Mummy Returns experience that you're only going to get so much from the script, you're going to really have to see the kinetic side of how he shoots it and all. And when I started to see the footage, it was just what I expected. I try to only work with the best of the best so they all make me look good. And yeah, no, he's all over. He's such a good friend. And you know, he read it and he said, oh, I got to get this together. This kind of film, you really can't wait to see finished images. You kind of have to start or never make it. So it's great every time a new shot comes in, whether I've written the cue or will be writing it, it's just great to see the difference as these shots are completed and the difference in the feel of, of how everything seems to go together. The difference in the feel of, of you have to find the right voice for the film. And Steve was very specific about, I think, a key area. This was not going to be a horror movie on any level. It was a romantic action-adventure monster movie. There are a number of themes. There's a very clearly heroic action-adventure theme, and we're actually having some fun with that theme because there's a moment where this gal kind of falls from the sky out of the clutches of a vampire, and the sidekick, Carl, catches her. And Carl gets the heroic music when he catches the girl. And, of course, Anna gets it when she needs it, and Van Helsing gets it. And Frankenstein gets it in the sequence we just did, where he grabs Van Helsing from going under the wheels of the carriage. He gets the heroic thing. So that kind of universally takes care of all of the heroic moments. Then there's this kind of more like the legend slash romantic cue. <gasps> Why? Oh, you're choking me! Give me reason not to. I can't. If people knew... <sighs> it's an interesting tone in the love story. It's not this out and out overtly huggy kissy kind of romance between these two. Before or after I stopped you from shooting him? Before. He's a werewolf. He's gonna kill people. He can't help it. It's not his fault. I know, but he'll do it anyway. Do you understand forgiveness? It's got all of the sexual tension, but they're also fellow warriors as they go through the film. So the romantic theme is kind of tempered with a little bit of the overview legend, big epic sense to it. To have memories of those you loved and lost is perhaps harder than to have no memories at all. All right. We'll look for your brother. The Dracula stuff is very powerful stuff. So we have a lot of low-end percussion and a lot of strong brass. Yes, master. 
How long before we are ready? Soon, Master. Very soon. Vampires have this very kind of gothic, over-the-top, with voices and all material that kind of travels through the film. Van Helsing's theme, which is kind of unique to him, he's got a very kind of tracky vibe to him when he's off doing his montage business. I believe we've got a 60 voice choir. They're bringing a lot to the overall scope of things. I don't set out kind of a clear plan about all that. I kind of work my way through and go, hmm, need something here. Then you find what you need. And then when you find that moment again, you go, found that already. And that's kind of how it organically builds rather than kind of getting too analytical about it. I wouldn't redo it for that, you know? Okay. Yeah, and I think, yeah. And Dennis can help that. I have to say that there's never been a better fit than, than Alan, because from day one, from the first cue, uh, the first time the first cue comes up, you just go, OK, well, here's another home run. Alan has done it again. We've got, I think, about 115 plus minutes of music, which is twice the amount of music in the average film. And so I saw the film for the first time sometime around December 15th, middle of December. Took my family on a goodbye vacation <laughs> between Christmas and New Year's, and I started literally seven days a week since January 2nd. And here we are about to go into April, and I'm still chasing the movie. Like that that, that then, one works. How does that, then, how does that then we want to wind up. Now we get the tritone, which might be all right. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. OK. <laughs> Very often you wind up in a situation with the director where they're really great at describing what they want, but that's not the movie they made. The best description you get from Steve is the movie he's made, scene by scene. And so what he basically does then is confirm that, yes, the movie you're looking at is the movie I wanted to make, and it's the movie I want you to score. And that really helps a great deal because he's very clear at every step of the way. We're in. That a great deal. Good. He's We're very, cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Let's rock on. Go, go, go! Come on! Good. We're cool, man. Let's rock on. I subscribed to Monster Magazine when I was a kid, and I loved all of those great Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein film, so this has been a real blast to kind of have, have a whack at it. 